you know, my father, um, um, he's a, he is a professor uh, of high energy physics, but one of the first Korean professors in Toronto. He was the first tenured professor in Toronto um, of Korean descent. And as such, he was thrust, yes, he was. As such, he was sort of thrust into a kind of leadership role, if only because when, when Korean immigrants were, were needing to get like someone uh, to, to, notar to sign their passports, they needed someone who, like, you know, doctors, lawyers, professors, and it was just like, dad. So there was a constant stream of people literally to our door um, for dad to co-sign mortgages sometimes um, in a few, in cases, but a lot of times to sign passport applications. And to get that position as tenured professor at U of T, I gather, mm -hmm. U of T, to get that, being a Korean Canadian, did he have to go through layers of prejudice to get there? Or oh, did academics, I mean, did he have to fight sort of political activism way to get to where he got as you had to? I, I don't, uh, that's a question I haven't had a chance to ask him. but. I do know that he was acutely aware of um, the fact that the Korean people in the Korean community had had obstacles uh, that that needed to be addressed, and and because of that, he was really active with a with a group of about twelve sort of senior Korean uh, Canadian Canadians um, to build a social infrastructure to, to support the community, including the Korean Canadian Cultural Association, uh, the Korean Canadian Scholarship Foundation, um, the Kwangju Memorial Foundation, which was basically a, a pro-democracy foundation to, to, to send, raise consciousness and send money, raise money and send money to the pro-democracy movement in South Korea. Because for a lot of my childhood, South Korea was was ruled through a military dictatorship. And the area that my father grew up in was one of the areas where there was quite a bit of dissent. And, um, and, and there was a massacre in Kwangju in the area where my father grew up. Um, it was student protest and the government responded quite brutally. So it's, it's, it's something that democracy and justice and the efforts that every individual is obligated to make uh, to defend our right to vote is something that's very deeply ingrained in my family. Is that part of the conversations at breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Um, kind of, it just sort of all around. Like I remember, I remember, like I, I remember going to, you know, our family driving to Ottawa to protest in front of the, um, uh, the Korean em embassy, the and Korean How old were you when you drove to Ottawa? I think it was about, 13. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I remember being quite happy to do it. And I remember my father reading, like making a speech in front of um, a, a huge crowd of Koreans. And I remember him crying. Like, just, I'd never seen my father cry before, but I remember him crying. This is after the student massacre. And this is at the protest in Ottawa? This was another event. Another yeah. event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father's very shy. He doesn't like speaking in public, so. Yeah, he's he's 89. He's pretty tough. And and uh, um, earlier in September, he called me up and said, "Oh, Gene, there's a protest in front of the Japanese uh, consulate on King Street. Can you go?" <laughs> I was like, "I want to go, Dad," but my foot was I I had an accident. My foot was like an eggplant. And I September, you mean last in month? In September, yeah, just last month, yeah. Yeah, so, so. they're pretty. My parents are pretty. Uh, I guess they're kind of in their, I guess, I'm, I'm realizing that they're kind of, in their own way, they're kind of like hippies of their generation in terms of, cre well, in some ways. He's a high energy particle physicist? High energy particle, well, not hippies, in t in, more in, just in terms of the justice thing, but I mean, they left Korea, right? For political reasons. Yeah, but they left. <laughs> they're, they're just maybe. And what, how, when did they leave Korea? Uh, 55, and then my mom in 1960. So the Korean War had just finished, right? The Korean War was Yeah, the Korean War finished, yeah. So they left right after the Korean War. Yeah, the scholarships, both of them, yeah. To Canadian universities? To U, uh, no, no, to, to the States. To so the States. So the United States, after the Korean War, um, the Americans took the South half, and, and the Communists took the North half. And the United States was very committed to 
ensuring that South Korea uh, that they were they were going to make South Korea an example of Western the 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 the, the, the virtue of Western values and capitalism. They were going to make sure South Korea was successful. So they're very active in the reconstruction, but also in terms of educating, of providing higher education for, um, for um, people like my so dad.